Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera and I haven't posted too many videos recently anyway. I know I owe you guys a video of a headphone comparison between a couple of the headphones I'm using right now, but I wanted to shoot this video first and I may put this up in a couple parts because it's going to take some work, I think. But what I want to show you today is I'm going to be replacing this subwoofer, which is a Power Sound Audio V1500 15 inch ported subwoofer with this subwoofer, an SPS SB2000 12 inch sealed subwoofer. Now you might be saying, uh, why would you do that? Are you crazy? Um, this subwoofer is clearly gonna have significantly more output. It's gonna go lower down to its ported tuning frequency with, with very little effort compared to a sealed sub that's gonna have a roll off, it's gonna rely on room gain, and certainly a 12 inch sealed sub isn't gonna play as loud as this. And you're right, um, but here's what I'm trying to deal with. My room is unfortunately fairly close to square. It's not a perfect square. I've got stairs coming down this side, which I'll show you in a minute. And some of you have probably seen in previous videos. And um, there's a little jut in um, at the back of the room where the landing from the stairs above where they come down and then turn and come down the side of the room. So there's some weird, you know, geometry there, but it's close to square. It's about 22 and a half by 21 and a half at the widest part. It comes into like 19 feet and then 17 feet, but it's, it's pretty close to square, not super high ceiling. So I've got some acoustic issues. So, you know, if you're thinking like, well, he's gonna replace it with this and he's gonna have less bass, that that won't solve the problem. Um, you know, you're right, um, that won't solve the problem. But here's what I'm trying to experiment with and what I'm doing. I'm not actually replacing this subwoofer with this subwoofer. I'm replacing that subwoofer with four of these. And the reason is I can put four of these subwoofers in various different places around my room. I can't do that if I'd have bought, well, if I'd have bought three more of those, first of all, it would have been significantly more money. These are not cheap subwoofers. If you're familiar, the SB2000 is not a you know, low end entry level couple hundred dollar subwoofer off of Amazon, but they're less expensive than that giant ported 15 inch sub. Um, obviously I haven't unboxed these yet. These are about a 14 inch cube. Uh, once you unbox them, that subwoofer is something in the 18 by 20 by 24 range or something like that. Um, so I can place these, you know, I can, I can move this end table a little bit and put one here if I want. I can put one back in this corner if I want to figure out how to maybe run it wirelessly. I can put one in that back corner or over there at the other end of the seating. I can't do that with subwoofers that big. So I'm hoping that with four of them I'll get enough um, boost from multi running multiple subs plus room gain that I can still get uh, the level of output I'm looking for. I don't run my subwoofers hot. I don't listen at reference level for movie soundtracks anyway. So I'm not looking for, you know, 115, 120 decibels. I'm looking for, you know, maybe 100, 105 decibels peak. Now, um, in the main band of these sealed subwoofers, that really won't be a problem anyway. Uh, it's really when you get below like 30 hertz and we'll have to see, um, I've never run a, a sealed sub in this room at all actually. So I'm gonna do some measurements and uh, post the results. I've already measured this subwoofer in this room in three, uh, in two different locations. Um, and I have those graphs. I, I measured it using the, actually the built-in live measurement feature, my Anthem um, Pre-Pro, where you can actually run the sub, play with the game, play with the phase and that kind of thing while it's running a sweep tone in the LFE band and you can actually see the results live on your screen. Um, one more thing that I think is relevant here that I'm trying to accomplish, which is these speakers here are Golden Ear Triton 1 speakers, and they have a powered subwoofer section in them. Let me move this out of the way. Down here, there is a powered subwoofer section, um, or a powered bass section, really. The designer, the intent was to create a true full range speaker that can go from 20,000 to down to 20 hertz, and um, largely accomplished that. In my room, I have measurements of these as well. Um, I, I can get very solid down to 25 hertz, and then I start to taper a bit. I, I would guess that 25 hertz is actually probably the tuning point of this uh, 
speaker and then it drops off from there. But it, I get output, real meaningful output at 20 hertz. And I say tuning point because while these speakers are not ported, they do have passive radiators. They have two passive radiators behind this grill cloth on each, they actually go all the way up to here. So from here all the way down to the floor is big passive radiators on both sides of each speaker. And passive radiators, if you don't know, are tuned. You tune them like you tune when you're designing a ported, uh, ported speaker. You tune it like you tune a port. Um, so you select a tuning frequency. It tells you how much surface area you need, mass on the to dampen the um, passive radiators, etc. These speakers actually have a speaker level input on the back, just regular speaker wire. And when you run them that way as a full range speaker, they're a three way. You have a mid range, a tweeter, a mid range, and then the low bass section down below. And what it does is, I don't know where the tweeter to mid range crossover is. I do know the lower section is crossed over to 100 hertz. And 100 and below goes to an amplifier that's DSP controlled to produce as flat a response in an anechoic situation as possible from 100 hertz below. And so that's what you get when you run, and they have something crazy like a thousand watt, you know, class D digital amp in them. They also have the ability to augment your home theater and be used as subwoofers directly because they have a line level LFE input on the back as well, and it will sell that, send that signal below 100 hertz down to the base section as well. So I actually technically have been running kind of three subwoofers. What I'm having trouble with is integrating them. Probably what would be ideal is if I would stop trying to use these as subwoofers and just let them be full range speakers. The problem with that is that I'm down to just the one subwoofer. And it's not a SPL issue in my room. This can play louder than I need it to. The issue is if I don't run the LFE into these speakers as well and then play with the crossover and the phase of this subwoofer, the issue is I get very uneven bass in my room. I have massive, almost like 18 decibel dips at around between 45 and 50 hertz and then around 90 and 100 hertz. Um, that's my room. That's not the speaker. That's not the subwoofer. It's not their fault. It's my room. You cannot use EQ to correct an 18 decibel dip. So what you need to do is resolve that by speaker placement. And ideally, there's a lot of literature out there about running two or even three. Is uh, Some people cite three as kind of the point of diminishing returns, but running multiple subs in a room in different locations and using that to smooth out your base. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm actually going to take this completely out of the system um, for this, and I'm going to run four of these SB2000s in the room, and I'm going to pull up my real-time measuring software and play with the phase and setting, you know, maybe the, this sub over here runs a few decibels below this sub, so I don't have localization by the seats. I don't know yet, but I'm going to play with them. I'm going to have one here, one where that basket is, and then probably two next to the seating. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll take a pause, make a cut here, and we'll actually do one of these, a little quick unboxing video, even though there's probably 10 unboxing videos of these on YouTube. I'll do a quick unboxing. So that's what we'll do next. I'll see you in a minute. 